dishonest, immoral, human rights abusing tyrants, we not only say that we'll never let up, we invite them to join us in calling for a return to decency, a return to truth telling, a return to the values that until now have distinguished the United States from totalitarian governments that have no regard for civil and human rights. Of course, our nation has had serious lapses in the past, as with the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, as with the enslavement of, then continuing horrendous discrimination against, people of African descent, as with the serious abuses of the intelligence community during the Cold War, and as with the CIA outrages as it organized the overthrow of the democratically elected governments of Iran and Guatemala, and as it supported death squads in Central America in the 1980s. However, because people of conscience tenaciously and courageously took a stand, our nation has, in the past, embraced progress, pledging to do better, striving for the higher moral road. Now, now with the deceit that led us to the illegal disaster in Iraq, the officially sanctioned kidnapping, disappearing and torturing of people around the world, the illegal spying on American citizens, and the assertion by the President of unrestrained totalitarian powers, we have taken the lowest road, regressing in a most dangerous manner, subversive to our Constitution and the best of our democratic values. As people tell us just to be quiet and go along, let us all keep in mind, silence is the essential collaborator with evil. Complacency is complicity. To stand up to challenge wrongdoing is itself wrongdoing. Either we stand for positive change or we sustain the status quo. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., our lives begin to end the day we remain silent about things that matter. And as Edmund Burke is often credited with saying, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. When our president, when our president and others in the executive branch have lied to us, leading our nation into a war of aggression against a country that posed no danger whatsoever in the United States and causing the deaths or lifetime injuries to tens of thousands of Americans and to hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, as well as untold chaos and destruction for millions of people throughout Iraq, are we to blindly fall in line like a bunch of amoral sheep by behind the man who calls himself the decider, but who we know to be the defrauder? <laughs> who and what have we become? If we simply remain quiet while agents of our nation's government pursue it to the authorization of our president, kidnap people around the world and send them to torture chambers in nations renowned for torture and other human rights violations, while the victims' families are without any information about what has happened to them. Is it any wonder that the United States has forfeited the goodwill demonstrated by people in so many nations after the attacks of 9-11? Is it any wonder that our nation is viewed as a world-class immoral hypocrite as our State Department criticizes numerous other nations for their human rights abuses? Yeah. Sadly, 
that in the eyes of many people around the world now, the Statue of Liberty has been replaced as an American icon by images of a hooded, evergreen prisoner standing on a box with electrodes attached to his body, by naked Muslim men in U.S. custody forced to simulate sex acts on each other, by the corpse of a man who has been beaten to death next to a U.S. soldier smiling broadly, giving a thumbs up sign or by a naked, terrified prisoner attacked by a U.S. military dog. Now the heinous atrocities committed as a result of an unprecedented authorization by the President of the United States serve as justifications by other human rights abusing nations. Sudan and Zimbabwe have justified the kidnapping and disappearances of political opponents on the basis that the United States is doing it too. The Olympic Games are supposed to represent high-mindedness, goodwill, and peaceful relations between nations. However, one day before President Bush came to Salt Lake City, for the opening ceremony of the 2002 Winter Olympic Games, he outrageously and erroneously declared that the Geneva Convention protections against cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment do not apply to detainees in the so-called War on 